This fly will be a Kaufman stone. This is a giant salmon fly imitation. It's a really big bug, uh, most prevalent in, west, in the western U.S. Springtime bug. Um, it's one of the biggest bugs you'll find in the water. It's a big creepy crawly. Uh, it's a fun fly to tie. It's not terribly complicated, but it is, it is a big fly, so it'll take a little while to get used to. Um, we're going to start off by putting a lead underbody. We want to keep this fly down close to the, to the river bottom. So we're going to weight this fly pretty heavily. Um, the parts of the fly as we go will be some lead wire for an underbody. We're going to use brown goose biots for the tail, some brown D-rib for a rib, some brown seal fur or synthetic substitute dubbing for the abdomen and thorax, and we're going to use a turkey quill for the wing case. We'll also add a pair of brown goose biot antennas at the front of the fly. Like I said, this fly is not terribly complicated, but it is big, so just stay in tune here as we go, and we'll, we'll work right through it. I'm going to start the thread just a couple eye lengths behind the hook eye, and just spiral the thread down the hook to start with. I didn't go quite back to the bin, just short of the point of the hook. And at this point, we're going to lay a couple of big pieces of lead wire down the side of each side of the hook to make a wider profile for this fly. Um, in this case, I'm using 35 thousandths lead, and we're tying on a size 4 TMCO 300. This is a longer than usual hook. This is about a 6X long hook, so this is going to make a big, wide fly. I'm going to take this lead wire. And I'm going to come back about three or four eye lengths back from the hook eye and lay it in right along the shank on the far side to start with. And I'll bind it in place with several turns of thread. I'll wrap back to about where my thread base ended and then I'll come forward again. And you can see how I'm just cross hatching that wire as I go. I'm not really worried about binding it down totally just yet. We're going to get another couple layers of thread on there. To break this back end off, I'm just going to pinch the hook where that lead was attached and twist it around till it breaks off. Then I'll take the same piece of lead and I'm going to make the underbody on my near side by laying it in right even with the first strand and wrapping back over it to the, to the back. And again, I want to make sure I get that anchored down tightly so that it doesn't move around during the rest of the tying process. Once I've gone back and forth over that a couple of times, I'll twist that wire off and break it flush as well. So you can see we've got a little bit wider profile platform to tie this fly on. That's going to thicken up the body of the fly a bit. While I'm back here, I'm going to build a little thread dam, just going from the bare shank up to the diameter of that lead to make that transition a little smoother. Now we're going to add one more layer of lead. We've got those two big pieces on the sides of the hook, but that doesn't add a tremendous amount of weight to the fly. So I'm going to take some slightly smaller lead, and this is 25 thousandths, and I'm going to wrap it on the front half of the hook shank over the lead wire underbody and all. Now the amount of lead wire that you attach to this is purely dependent on how deep you want to fish this fly or how fast the water is where you'll be fishing it. And you can see how I'm just kind of finishing off these last few turns and tucking the ends in by pinching them down with my fingernail. So now we've got a pretty heavily weighted underbody and I'm going to cross hatch that a few times with my thread just to anchor things down a little more smoothly. It's probably not a bad idea here to add just a drop of cement to those lead wraps. We've got a lot of thread work mixed in there. So we're going to come in and just add a little drop of vinyl cement to that thread base. And this will help anchor everything down, saturate that thread, and make sure nothing moves during the rest of the, rest of the fly. You can see how I'll go top and bottom. It doesn't take much, and I can kind of smear that around with my fingertip as well. All right, now we're going to get back to work on the tail. So before we start, this is being such a big fly, rather than just tie the biots in straight off the back of the hook, we're going to make a little ball of dubbing. And more so than as an aid to help split those biots, what this is going to do is kind of make the body start from a little thicker point. Stonefly nymphs are, don't taper to a very fine end. They generally have a little bit thicker startup point. So I'm going to take just a pinch of this brown dubbing and twist it onto the thread as tightly as I can. And this is a really coarse dubbing. You can use Angora Goat, um, very similar dubbing to this. Any sort of coarse dubbing that will build quickly. And you can see how, how little dubbing I've got on there. But as I wrap it here, you'll see how fast this builds up. I'm going to build a little nub here, just at the apex of the bend, to build some diameter to the back of the fly. Just a little bump there. And then we'll select two biots, and we're going to tie those in. 
by opposing them and measuring them about a half a shank long. Maybe go just a touch shorter than a half shank there. I'm going to lay these in by pressing them down on either side of that ball. And you can see how that ball will help to separate those. Then I'll grab them in my material hand. Now I've got plenty of room to bury the butt ends of these biots in the underbody, so I'll just wrap forward over them and crisscross them a few times to anchor things down. I'm going to run my thread up to the back edge of those wrapped lead, and that's where we'll tie our rib in. Our rib is going to be made out of brown D-rib. D-rib is a plastic material. It's very durable, and it's D-shaped in cross-section. It's flat on one side and round on the other. We want to wrap this, ultimately, with the round side up. So to get that to turn out that way, we want to tie it in with the flat side up. Whenever we tie a material in, it's always going to fold on the first turn. So if we want the round side up, we've got to tie it in with the flat side facing up to start. So I'll start that right behind our lead wraps, right on top of the hook, and I'll wrap back over it to the bend. I want to make sure I anchor it down tightly at the bend, and then I could run forward over it again. And you can see on a fly this big, you've got plenty of room for all the thread maneuvers that you might need. Now we're going to dub the abdomen, and this is going to take a fair bit of dubbing. We may need to apply it in more than one strand. We've got a long hook and a big fly. So I'm going to start with a pretty heavy clump of dubbing. And start to twist it onto the thread. I'm going to twist it pretty heavily. And you can see it's not dubbing down terribly tightly because it is so coarse, but that's sort of the whole idea on this fly. We want it shaggy and ragged. I'm going to use that bare thread to jump back, and you can see how fast I can travel in just those three wraps, to get back to the bend and put the first turn at the bend, and then I can work forward from there. Now with this coarse dubbing, you've got to kind of pile it up to make sure it stays firm enough that our rib won't sink too far in when we're finished. So I want to definitely pile this up, and you can see I can retighten this as I go. And I got about halfway through the abdomen with that long strand of dubbing. So obviously this is going to take a bit more dubbing than you're used to. We're going to reapply a second strand, and we'll just continue forward from there. I'll try to run right back up to the diameter that we left off at and kind of keep things thick from that point forward. I'm going to add just a touch more to finish off the front edge of the abdomen. These are big burly bugs. Um, in most areas of the country, they're a springtime hatch. They do vary a bit in size, and this is on the bigger end of the spectrum that I see in Colorado, but I know in the uh, Oregon area, they get much bigger. So you can see we've got a tapered abdomen there that's pretty stout to start with. Now we're going to wrap our rib, and I'm just going to spiral wrap the rib in evenly spaced increments, and I want to sort of stretch it tight as I go through, and this will make some nice juicy segments on the fly as I come forward. You can see how the dubbing will sort of peek out, and you can see here why it's so important to make sure that dubbing is tight, is that, that D-rib really compresses it down as I wrap it through. I'm going to tie the D-rib off at the front of the abdomen, and I'll trim the butt end out. And at this point, we're going to put our first wing case in. For the wing case, I'm going to use a turkey quill. This is a tail feather, and I've coated this with Fleximint so that these fibers won't split. If you try to do this with a dry feather that hasn't been coated, these fibers split very easily when we tie them in for the wing case. What I've done here is strip the fibers out from the stem so that they're as straight as I can get them, and coated them with the Fleximint and let them dry. That's something you'll need to do ahead of time. I'm going to cut three of these segments out, and I want these segments about as wide as the gap of the hook. I'm going to take this first segment, and I'm going to tie it in by the butt end. We want this thicker section because we've got more glue in it, and it seems to be a little more durable. I'm going to fold it in half with the outside of the feather up, like so. You can see where the fold is. And I'm going to come from the bottom to the edge and make a cut, making a V to form the wing case. Now I've got my thread right up against the front edge of the abdomen. I'm going to set this first wing case in just overlapping about a third of the way down the abdomen, and I'll push it down with my thumb and catch it with a loose turn of thread to buckle it in place. I'll tie that down with a few more tight turns of thread and anchor it in place. 
then I can trim the butt ends out. Now, this piece is still good for the next wing case, so you can keep going with that same one as long as you don't get down too thin. I'm now going to dub a little bit more dubbing for the thorax. And we're going to divide the front end of the hook here into thirds. So I'm going to apply two sections of dubbing and three wing cases. A real Stonefly Nymph has three very prominent wing cases, or two prominent wing cases in a head, I should say. So we want to make sure we match that with the number of cases that we'll tie in. Now we've got a little taper coming down, just like we have on several other flies. So we want to stay from the front of that and work to the back. And I'll slightly overlap the dubbing onto the base of that first wing case before I jump forward onto bare hook again. I try to keep the hook as thin a diameter from this point on out because as I tie those wing cases in, if I tie to the smaller arbor diameter of the hook, that wing case will cup a little more and shape to the wing case, or shape to the thorax a little better. So I've got my second segment here that I'm going to tie in for a wing case. I'm going to fold it the same way as the first and trim it to a point so we've got that V cut. And I'm going to overlap this just to where the point of the V touches the base of the first wing case. I'll lay that in the same way, take a loose turn around it and tighten toward me. Make a few more turns to lock that in and you can see how those nest one right on top of the other very nicely. I'll trim the butt ends off and I'll come back in with a bit more dubbing. Now we're going to come in again from the front. I've still got a couple eye lengths worth of space here. I'm going to come from the front and dub back up to the base of that second wing case, trying to match the diameter of the thorax in the first segment. So now we've got our, our second segment of the thorax and we're going to add our third wing case. We've got a split one there, so I'm going to cut one more. I'll take this and fold it just as we did the first two. Trim it to a point and I'll lay it in just as we did the first with that V just touching the base of the second wing case. Pinching it down tight around the shank right at the front of the fly. So we've got our three wing cases stacked across the front of the fly. I'll lift these butt ends up and trim them out as close as I can. And I'll wrap down over the stubs to really anchor, anchor everything in place. Now we're going to add a couple more biots for the head of the fly. And I try to keep these relatively short just because tying the fly on later with the biots attached, they can sometimes get in the way of the hook eye. So I try to keep these short so they're a little less obtrusive, but I still like them on the fly. I'm going to even the tips up. Measure them about the same length as the tail. And I'll cut them to length there. I'm going to press those two butt ends down on either side of the hook shank and I'll do that reverse pinch to catch them along the sides of the hook. A few turns of thread to anchor them down and then I can kind of press them with my thumbnail to separate them and stand them out from each other. Now we're going to dub just a bit more, sort of like we did that first nub behind the biot tails to sort of finish off the thread head here so we don't have a much skinnier head than the rest of the body. We want to kind of keep that bulky profile all the way through the fly. So I'm going to add a bit more dubbing. And I'm just going to pile up a little neck here at the back of the fly. As I end, I'll slide those two biots back and jump right up onto the hook shank behind the hook eye. And I'll whip finish there. Reach in and trim that thread. Then I'll use my dubbing brush to pick some of these legs out. So I'm going to come in along the sides of the thorax. And you can see how this dubbing is so buggy it really shags out nicely. I'll pick out along the sides of the thorax and just kind of create some legs rather than having to tie them in separately. And you can even work back along the edges of the abdomen to get some gills and feelers. When this fly gets wet, all those little loose fibers will trap some air bubbles. Um, really becomes alive looking in the water. One last thing I do to this fly before I finish it off or before I take it out of the vise, so I'll put my thumb right under the back edge of the the bottom side of the back wing case and I'll bend the front of the hook down just a little bit. These bugs often have a, a slight curve to their body. We're just going to arch that fly just a bit to a little more accurately represent the real bug. 
That's a Kaufman stone. You can tie it in a golden color or an olive color to match squalas. Um, really versatile little fly. Uh, tied in much smaller sizes, it goes by pretty fast. This is the most common size that you'll see though, um, and it's a great match for the big salmon flies you'll see in the spring in the Rockies.